Many chemical reactions are reversible, and it would be good to know the extent of the forward or reverse reaction. The equilibrium constant allows us to measure the extent of the forward or reverse reaction. Another way of defining the equilibrium constant is it's a numerical value that indicates how the reaction, quote, set itself up. To the left here on the screen is a generic chemical reaction. Two reactants producing two products in equilibrium. And this fraction here, K equals CD over AB with the exponents, that in fact is the equilibrium constant expression for this general chemical reaction. Now I'm going to point out many things here. First I'll start off looking at the math. I want to emphasize that C here in the brackets is the molar concentration of one of the products and D in the brackets is the molar concentration of the other product. And the superscripts are in fact powers, exponents. This C is the coefficient in front of the actual formula of what C would be and the exponent D would be the coefficient in front of the formula for D. And we have C and D multiplied. And the same thing in the denominator. We have the molar concentration of A raised to the exponent A, which would be the coefficient, multiplied by the molar concentration of the other reactant raised to its coefficient B. If we have a fraction where we have a large number in the numerator and a smaller number in the denominator, the value of this fraction is going to be something greater than 1. For example, a thousand over ten equals one hundred, which in fact is greater than one. The other extreme is if we have a small number in the numerator and a larger number in the denominator, such as ten over a thousand. In this situation we would have a number less than one, such as ten over a thousand would be point zero one. Well, take a look at the equilibrium constant expression here. It is a fraction with numbers in the numerator and the denominator. So, if the numerator is large, larger than the denominator. In this case we would have k, let's say, much greater than 1. This is indicative of a more of a product favored reaction. Because the numerator is a larger number, therefore the concentrations of the products are larger than the concentrations of the reactants. In the other case, if the equilibrium constant is some number less than one, it is a reactant favored reaction. Because the denominator is a larger number than the numerator, Therefore, indicating that the concentration of the products, excuse me, the concentration of the reactants, excuse me, is larger, or larger than the concentration of the products. I'd like to further reinforce these ideas using a graph. Here I show a very simple reaction, A producing product B in equilibrium. To the right of that, of the coordinate axes. On the y-axis, I'll label it concentration. On the x-axis, label it time. We'll mark T0 and zero concentration. 
And we'll just start off here at the beginning of the experiment with A at some concentration and B down below at zero concentration. Now as the reaction proceeds, A will decrease for time. and B will increase. There's going to become a time where the system attains equilibrium. And that time is when the concentrations of both A and B become fixed or are constant. And that time is, well, let's estimate it to be right there. And that is TEQ, or T equilibrium. And at that time, at that point, the concentrations of A and B are fixed. Again, they're not the same, and they don't have to be the same, but they are constant and they're fixed at some value. Now I want you to predict for me if this is a product or reactant favored reaction. Or another way of saying it, how did the reaction, quote, set itself up? Did it set itself up favoring products or reactants? Take a look at that and take a guess. Well, if you guess products, you're correct. Because if we look at the equilibrium constant, K, is B the product raised to the B power over A, the reactant, raised to the A power. And we see that the concentration of B is greater than the concentration of A. And that falls into that scenario of larger number over smaller number. So K is going to be greater than 1. Therefore, this is a product favored reaction. Next I'll show you a reactant favored reaction. Now before I draw the graph I want you to predict in your mind what the graph may look like. Remember I'm going to try to show you a reactant favored reaction. So reaction starts off A decreases, but we find that it attains equilibrium quite early, where the concentration just decreases to this amount here. And B, oops, B increases to a certain extent, but then levels off to this value. And we'll estimate that the react or reactant product attained equilibrium right there, that time there. And we could see at that point that their concentrations are constant. They remain the same forevermore. Now in this case, you see that the value of A concentration of A is greater than the concentration of B. If that's the case, we look at the equilibrium constant in this case we have a small number over a large number. Therefore, K is going to be less than 1 and is going to be reactant favored. 